funny that when you look back on your life, you realize that you've actually come full circle. When I was nine, I went down to a place that I called the Flat Rocks and saw a plant that was very dry and very dead. That night it rained and the next morning the plant was green and thriving. So I told my dad, but he wouldn't believe me because he was a farmer. But it stayed with me and many years later, after my PhD, I went back to the farm and started to collect my first samples. These are now called resurrection plants and they've become the basis of my life's work ever since. Climate change is one of the biggest environmental threats that we're going to be facing in the next 20 years. And of course the implications of that is always going to be on our food security. 95% of world plant food supplies are cereals, predominantly maize, wheat and rice. Cereals are annuals, so you have to have a period of annual rainfall. The climate change models predict that annual rainfall is not going to happen regularly and it's not going to be enough rain. In a continent like Africa, where most of agriculture is rain-fed, this is a crisis. Very little on this planet tolerates water loss. All living organisms are comprised predominantly of water, and loss of a small amount of that results in death. Resurrection plants are really amazing. They can lose 95% of their water and remain in that dry state for years, and revive within 24 to 48 hours when water is supplied. What I'm trying to do as a molecular physiologist is understand how can they lose all that water and not die. And to use those mechanisms to make drought tolerant crops that will go a long way to providing food security for Africa in the future. The majority of land plants provide seeds that are dry and desiccation tolerant. And because I had a very early conviction that seeds and resurrection plants were switching on the same genes, we actually targeted experiments to try and prove that. And we just finished sequencing the genome of a resurrection plant, and that was our final confirmation that, in fact, yes, they are using the same core set of genes in order to withstand water loss. So we're trying to work out what the environmental and cellular signals are that turn on these genes in resurrection plants. Everything from water content, light, sugar, electrical signals, volatile signals. What switches that gene on? And once we've understood that, we would like to use biotechnology to activate existing genes that are in crops so that they are able to respond to environmental and cellular signals of drought by turning on mechanisms to tolerate water loss. I really do believe that my dream of making drought tolerant crops is possible. For a subsistence farmer in Africa, it's gonna be a crop. He doesn't have to go and buy more seed at the end of the season because it'll revive and it'll revive and it'll revive. Resurrection plants captured my imagination all those years ago. And to now be unlocking their secrets in the hope that I can make a difference to farmers and to help solve a food crisis on my continent is what really drives me every day. <laughs>